just a few years before the Mar blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. Just a few years before the Mountain Meadows Massacre was another disaster involving the Willie and Martin Handcart Companies. Several hundred people died crossing the plains, ending up in the harsh winters of Wyoming. In our next conversation with historian Will Bagley, he has some surprising allegations about Brigham Young in relation to the handcart disasters. We'll also talk about the Mormon Reformation and how that tied together the, these two disasters. Check out our conversation. I also wanted to mention one other thing. Uh, we're giving away this free book uh, by Will Bagley, um, The Whites Want Everything, that talks more about uh, Indian and Mormon relations in Utah. And so if you'd like a chance to win this free book right here, sign up at gospeltangents.com slash Bagley and uh, you could win. Sign up today. Now back to our conversation. Because by stirring up people, by exploiting the Reformation, which was a zealous time of absolute insanity, they really made the massacre possible. And So let's talk a little bit about that, because I think most, some, some of my listeners won't understand what the Reformation is. So uh, about 1857, Brigham Young tried to reconvert the church, or can, can you tell us more about that? Well, okay. Okay, he, the, everything in history is tied together. So I'm going to start with the handcart disaster. And the Martin and Willie handcart disaster. The M Martin and Willie handcart disaster. And I wrote another book called South Pass, which is my account of the handcarts. And it was basically another demonstration of what a miser Brigham Young was. He was a cheapskate among cheapskates and he decided that people could haul carts across the plains and save him a lot of money and it was generally his money because uh, he complained in 1855 that uh, Erastus Snow had got him into uh, $50,000 in debt to bring people to Utah and his Young's orders were not always clear, and Snow thought he was doing the right thing, and so did a lot of the people who made it to Utah. But Brigham Young was going to do it cheap, and he was going to make people do the work that previously uh, people crossing the plains had left to oxen and animals. So everything goes fairly well, although the people who made it in the first three foot handcart, blah, blah, blah. the first three handcart trains uh, were st pretty well starved to death by the time they got to Utah. And, but, but they made it. And they did make pretty good time, which was another belief that these, this new system would ensure. And They, they were welcomed at the mouth of Immigration Canyon with brass bands and uh, their friends would come out and get them and bring them food. <laughs> and, um, so the idea was wagons were really expensive, oxen were really expensive, and so Brigham Young said, well, we can do this cheaper because a lot of people wanted to come to Utah because he was telling everybody, hey, come to Utah. Um, so, that, so that they yeah. got hand carts which were a lot less expensive, and he thought that they that you know if you if you carried your own hand cart, you could get there just as fast as an ox could. I mean, is that that was the theory? Okay, but the reality was quite different. And then his agents, who were mostly uh, church big brass like Frank, Franklin D. Richards, started the last two trains way too late, and everybody knew it was too late. But they did it anyway, and they, uh, William Kimball, who had been a missionary, converted a lot of these people, said that he'll eat any snow that falls on the handcart pioneers. Um, but a lot more snow fell than William Kimball could eat. And by October, 
when the snow blizzards hit as they're approaching South Pass, they actually hit on the North Platte River. Um, people start starving and freezing to death. And there are a thousand people out in the mountains. Um, so Brigham Young gets word of this through Franklin D. Richards and goes into conference, it's late October by this time, and uh, how does he deal with the crisis? He lays it on the bishops. He says, you guys get stuff and send it up and feed the handcart pioneers and bring them on in. And so the bishops do it, and they do a remarkable job of a rescue effort, but um, still hundreds of people die miserably. It is not a pleasant way to go. And I did a long article on this for the Journal of Mormon History, and it's available on the internet. But I was shocked when I found out what Brigham Young's priorities were. And what did Brigham Young put ahead of the lives of these people? His steam engine. He, he was importing through A.O. Smoot, who's come into the news lately as a slave owner in Utah, but he's also Brigham Young's agent and man on the trail. He led a lot of freight trains to Utah with stuff that Brigham Young really wanted, and they included uh, a steam engine, and we have no idea what he, Brigham Young wanted to do with a steam engine. Uh, it may have been that he intended to have a steam yacht on the Great Salt Lake, <laughs> but some of these things are still mysteries. And I was aware of the orders that Brigham Young had sent up to Smoot because another Richards uh, d d left a memoir. He, he died shortly after writing the memoir, but it's clear he wanted this story told. And what Smoot, Smoot wrote a letter and said, well, it's been a hard trip. Most of our oxen have died. Um, and I'm going to leave the books and the glass and the steam engine and the groceries at Fort Bridger and come on into Salt Lake. And so Smoot heads down the trail and at the mouth of Echo Canyon there's an express messenger from Brigham Young saying, go back and bring in my steam engine and my groceries and my books and my glass. And my and the class. And so Smoot and, and then he and he also says, and take uh, oxen and wagons from the rescue parties. So his property is more important than these people who are starving to death. Um, and the agents who have to go do this are ashamed of it. It's horrific. Um, but that's how that, that's the backstory on the handcart disaster. And by November 30th, when the last handcart train gets in, in absolutely miserable shape, it's pretty clear that this system was not a good idea. Um, but what shocked me was that Brigham Young would put stuff, his stuff, ahead of people's lives. And that's the kind of guy he was. He was very similar to our current president. It's 2020. And he, he, he was a tyrant, and he was an authoritarian, and he issued a lot of orders without thinking through what are the consequences. But at the same time, they've got 
the Reformation underway. And that started in September of 1856. And it is, Utah, Utah has been through a famine. They've had really hard times. Um, the famine breaks in 1857, but in 1853, 56, it's still very hard times. And Brigham Young decides it's the people's fault because it can't be his fault. It's everybody else's fault. And this is what the uh, Reformation does. And he assigns, or I think Jedediah Grant decides he's going to be in charge of it. See, I always thought Jedediah Grant was kind of the driver bef bef behind the Restoration, and Brigham just kind of let him do his thing. Is that? Well, that's how it's sold, but it's not what happened. It was. It goes, and they even used reformations earlier in different periods. But he was the face and voice of it, and he gets out and he's baptizing people in creeks in December and uh, dies of pneumonia, probably. Jedediah Grant. Yeah. Um, and, and in in the faithful telling of the Reformation. It ramps down, it's virtually over. But it's not true. It lasts well into 1857, and then Brigham Young just sort of pulls the plug on it all at once and says, uh, people will start getting the sacrament again. Which, of course, means a lot to these early people. So how long was the Reformation? When did it, when did it start? When did it end, roughly? Um, it starts in, well, it actually starts during the summer of 1856 and continues uh, well into the spring of 1857. Okay. But it's, it's a matter of shifting blame because you can't blame the leaders. It's a, it's a variation on the doctrine the king is always right. And the prophet can't be wrong and that's still true today. But they're only human beings, and everybody makes mistakes. Anyway, so it's just it, that's where the hysteria makes the, ma the massacre possible. Okay, one other quick question. So, you because you, you started this talking about the uh, Martin Willie Hand Company, Handcart Company. What year was that approximately? I'm trying to remember. 1855. 56. 56. So I was in 56. Okay. Okay. So this is just a year before Mount Meadows then? Yes. But this is what really uh, shocked me. As I was investigating, I go, well, what is it about glass and uh, the steam engine that can't just stay at Fort Bridger and books? Uh, what is it that Brigham Young is so concerned about? And you know what it is? It's the groceries, because in 1856, what are groceries? They're not vegetables and what we would often, they're not green groceries. They're stuff like liquor and tobacco. And what Brigham Young does is he has a couple of big wagons, a couple of tons of liquor and tobacco squirreled away at Fort Bridger. And that will not last at Fort Bridger. <laughs> but my book, South Pass, describes all of this and provides the documentation on it. Um, and I remember I told this, what I discovered to Rick Turley, and he just put his head in his hands and couldn't believe it. But that's just it. If you're dealing with primary sources in the church archives, you're going to find out a lot of stuff that's very disturbing at a moral level. Um, and it bothers me. Um, and, and I find it hard to understand how people can be so selfish, uh, especially religious leaders. But So the liquor and the tobacco was intended for? Brigham Young. It was his, it was his stuff. And his, his alcoholic wives. Um, it wasn't easy being married to Brigham Young. <laughs> uh, 
Mm-hmm. All right, so so we've got the Martin Willie Handcart disaster, 1856. Yeah. As a result of that, we have the Reformation, I guess. Well, no, the Reformation started uh, before the before the disaster. Before a handcart disaster is going on. Okay, so we're trying to recommit people to the gospel. Yeah. And uh, and so Brigham Young's doing a lot of fiery sermons. Yes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our conversation with historian Will Bagley. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about President Buchanan trying to push the Mormons out of the United States of America. Buchanan thought that by extending uh, America, purchasing Cuba, and getting most of northern Mexico to open for the slaveocracy, that that could avert the Civil War. And the Mormons are just sort of in the way, and he's convinced that if he can get them to move to Mexico, um, they'll support his plan to defuse the slave crisis. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe to patreon.com slash gospel tangents. And for just $5 a month, you can hear the entire interview without any interruption. If you'd like a paperback version of our transcripts, go to Amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents interview. Also, if you'd like to give the money to me and not Amazon, please subscribe on my website, and I'll be able to send you a transcript as soon as they are completed, and click the subscribe button. You can also find our latest information on Facebook.com slash Gospel Tangents, as well as we're on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. And don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. The link is at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents, and you can subscribe there. Also, please give us a five-star review. If you want to support all of the podcasts as part of the Dialogue Podcast Network, go to lyceum.fm, that's L-Y-C-E-U-M dot F-M, and do a search for Dialogue Podcast Network or Gospel Tangents, because, you know, that's a pretty cool one, too. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got some of our great videos. Thanks again.